bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Well, thank you for joining us. Rochelle Chong is here. She's a commissioner on the PUC. We always find out fascinating things from Rochelle. One of the things now, there's a new event that's connected with 911 calls, which we will fill you in on in a minute. But first of all, is there some question about when people should call 911? You know, there is, Jack. Um, we're trying at the PUC to help train people to know when the right time to call 911 is. When your feet are on fire? I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be a good time. Yeah. Um, the main thing to know is call 911 when it's a life threatening situation. So there's a fire, there's a crime in progress, someone needs an ambulance. But if it's a cat up the tree, probably uh, not oh. as serious. So okay. use the non-emergency police number then. And the reason is a lot of the 911 centers are jammed with calls. So you want to make sure that the people with life-threatening emergencies can get through. Okay, are people using that line more and more for things like that? Like you know, there's a cat up a tree, a perfect <laughs> example. Or they might call 911 if uh, they've got a sick child or something in the middle of the night, that kind of thing. Would That's that be right. a legitimate call? Well, if the child is so yeah. ill that it is a life-threatening situation, that might be if they need an ambulance. Yeah. If the child, though, uh, really what you should be calling something. is the clinic to the night yeah. nurse, that would not be an appropriate call. Yeah. So what we're trying to educate the public about is the word life-threatening should be the key in making your decision to call 911. Yeah. And probably the other reason we have a lot of calls to 911 is the popularity of the wireless phone. Many people have cell phones and now people f you know, have the ability to call for help if they see an emergency. Uh, suppose they see a car accident. Uh, that's common. People will call in, they hear it on the radio all the time, I'm driving down 101 and I just saw an accident or something like that. That's right. Now the problem is you might have 50 cars go by so 50 calls have now gone to 911 to report the accident. Yeah. So unless you're very early on to the accident or you see something that's very unique about it, you should assume that probably somebody has called it in yeah. and you shouldn't repeatedly try to call 911 because probably somebody has called it now, in. Now the service you're talking about which is being implemented now, I assume? Yes. Uh, where people call you? Yes, reverse 911. Okay. Um, there it's are not Mrs. Clinton, is it? Three hundred one. No, I, not to my knowledge. Okay, all right. But anything could happen in this race. Yeah. Um, a number of the cities and counties have put in an interesting new service called Reverse 911. Uh -huh. So an example is there's a fire, and so the local authorities can call a particular geographic area, either a zip code or a neighborhood, to warn those residents there is a fire. Evacuate now, and please take this route. Wow, okay, that's, uh, that's really under the emergency services venue, I mean, when you think about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what about if somebody taking a what-if situation, you're living in a big apartment house, as many people do, especially in the city, and there's a fire on the roof, and people, would they get a call to all the apartments there to say that your roof is on fire or run for your life or whatever? I mean, would it work like that? Yes, it, it is apparently can be quite specific as to the block and the address. Uh -huh. So they could be as specific as a particular office apartment yeah. building. Um, and what we want to tell people is if they get this type of emergency notification message, then it might come to their landline phone, it might come to their cell phone, it might come to their text pager. They should obey the instructions. They should not call, for example, 911 to confirm the emergency Don't message. call back, in other words. That's right, because 911, remember the lesson is call when you have a life-threatening emergency, yeah. not to confirm an evacuation notice. So if you got the call and you're confused about it, you might consider turning on the TV or the radio to confirm the emergency message, uh -huh. or to go to a neighbor to say, hey, did you get this call? What are we supposed to do? And then do what they told you to do. If they said get out of the building, get out of the building. Right. It's on fire. Yeah. If yeah. they said go, go out this particular route, Go out that route. Follow those directions, is that right? That's right. All right, Rochelle, always nice to see you. Uh, Rochelle Chong has been our guest. She is commissioner with the PUC. Life gets more complicated all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Thanks for being here. You're very welcome. <laughs>